Western civilization was shaped by Europe's great waterways. Below me is the Danube, which cuts through the heart of Hungary's capital city, separating the historic hills of Buddha with the more bustling boulevards of Pest. We're starting our scenic adventure in this Cinderella city of towers and turrets, basilicas and battlements. It's a very romantic place. But instead of a handsome hussar, I've got my bestie, Jane Turner. She's come to join me. Mwah, mwah. I think we're a little bit like Budapest. You're like Buddha, all sort of, you know, sort of serene and elegant. Oh, do you mean like Buddha as in fat? No. And I'm... You're a pest. And I'm a pest, that's, that's right. Yeah, Buddha and pest. Well, thank you, Kathy. And listen, the best thing about filming in Budapest is having our photo taken in front of all these ancient relics. It makes us look so young. It does. It does make me look young when I stand in front of an ancient relic. Shut up. <laughs> Built in the late 1800s to celebrate the 1,000th birthday of the Hungarian state, Fisherman's Bastion is a fabulously fanciful recreation of a medieval fortress. Stunning. It's an incredibly so beautiful, beautiful yeah. city. And it you never think, oh, I must go to Budapest. And when you're here, you just think, this is better than Paris. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so calm, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. calm feeling. Perhaps the reason locals are so relaxed is the abundance of thermal pools. The grandest of them all is the Seychelles, which boasts the largest medicinal baths in Europe. It's so opulent and grand and beautiful. I know, but look at that, and that's the hot spa. From the Roman settlers who built the hot tubs here in Hungary to the city's Turkish occupation, Budapest has long loved its bath time. Pest is the east side of the city, and the majestic gateway to this historical area is Heroes Square, a grand structure with 14 statues of Hungarian heroes, men who rebelled against invaders and shaped their country's destiny. So this is Hero Square, which apparently celebrates a thousand years of Hungarian culture, because Hungary's right in the middle of Europe, so everyone who was invading anywhere else tramped right through it. The Russians, the Austrians, the, yeah, the Turks. The Soviets. And it still stayed, the, the Hungarian language stayed, yeah. and this is a celebration of the fighter spirit of the Hungarian people. That's right. It? Yeah. As beautiful as Budapest is by day, it's after the sun goes down that this city truly sparkles. The Gothic architecture and Rapunzel turrets and towers take on a fairy tale charm as Budapest proves why she's the grandest old dame on the Danube. Um, besides Jane, that is. Second stop on our aquatic adventure is the Austrian capital, Vienna, where culture exudes from every arty nook and creative cranny. You can't visit Vienna without embracing its musical heritage. And with tonight's scenic and rich exclusive event, we have a chance to get glammed up and earn ourselves some serious cultural kudos. An intimate private concert performed exclusively for us by some of Vienna's leading musicians will leave you feeling so Marie Antoinette-ish that you'll be tempted to tell the rest of the world to just go and eat cake. Vienna was the stomping ground for the hedonistic Habsburg dynasty. And while the empire has passed its amuse by date, their legacy lives on with grand boulevards and imperial palaces. Schönbrunn Palace was the Habsburgs' former summer residence. And while it was originally built to rival Versailles, they ran out of funds and could only afford a measly 1,400-room Baroque masterpiece. Baroque sent them Baroque because they had a serious gold, sorry, guilt complex. Here we are at Schönbrunn Palace, not a bad shack, and home to the ultimate matriarch, Murray Therese. What a working mother. 16 kids, one of whom was Marie Antoinette. Oh, and an empress. Not bad for a day's work. The palace is now just a few k's west of the centre of Vienna, but for most of its glorified life before the city grew, it was a country retreat, the Viennese version of a fibro weekender. But these days, even commoners like us can claim this place as home. They have 200 families who live here. Oh, wow, 200 families. 
Fantastic. It's not a shabby shack, is it? <laughs> and didn't Mozart play here for Mozart from was six years and he played oh, here. Retreat. And he was so impressed by the palace and by the queen yeah. that he jumped into her lap and said that he wanted to marry her. And how old was he? Six. Six. Oh, well, that, what an underachiever. Yeah. The palace sits on over 170 hectares, with gardens almost as big as the country of Monaco. But to visit, all you need is a passport to pleasure, especially in the park's piece de resistance, the Gloriette, perched atop Schrungren Hill. It was built as a monument to the soldiers who gave their lives for love of empire. And from here, you not only have a bird's eye view over the manicured park and the lavish palace, but also the sumptuous city.